Hello and welcome to the first part of the second Lambda Rising tutorial. In this tutorial we will clear up some of the functionality of the Hammer Editor in respect to the tools on offer. You need to do this before you start to make a map. So let's start the Hammer Editor. When the editor is open, click File then New and you will soon see four smaller windows open on your monitor screen. They all have different parts to play mainly in the direction in which you view your project. So let's go quickly over them. The first one is the 3D view. The other three are your wireframe views. Top right is the top view, bottom left is the front view and bottom right is the side view. The last three are as default in wireframe but we will show you more about this when we come to create a block or something similar in the map. When you put the mouse cursor in the top left corner of one of these boxes, for example, side view XY or front view YZ, if you click on this area, you can change the wireframe to other useful views. But for now, leave the views in wireframe. In the wireframe views, you will see two intersecting green lines these show you the middle of the map environment. When you hold the spacebar and the left mouse button, you can move the grid. This helps sometimes with positioning the camera. And with the mouse wheel, if you have one, you can zoom in and out. In the 3D view, you can use W, A, S and D keys on your QWERTY keyboard, as in most of the major games. Or you could use the cursor keys. By now you should have noticed the small and large boxes that make up the grid. This helps with accurate sizing of the geometries. You may make the grid larger or smaller by using the numbers 8 and 9. Or you could go to the menu along the top of the screen where you will find two little grid icons. One has a plus symbol, the other a minus. This will help you place items or objects accurately on the floor plan as long as you use the snap to grid function. On the left side of the screen we have 11 icons that you will need to build your map. First tool is the selection tool. When this tool has been selected you can create a yellow lined box in one of the wireframe views. Above and to one side of this box you can see size values. You can change the height and the width this will make it possible for you to select anything that exists within the box at the same time. The next tool is the magnifying glass and you can use this tool especially if you don't have a mouse wheel and obviously with it you can zoom in and out. With the block tool we come to the most important tool. It's used for just about everything in your map including walls, floor, sky etc. When you click on this tool and drag in one of the wireframe views, you will see, just like the selection tool, the now familiar yellow lined box will appear on your screen. Release the left mouse button and a white box will replace the yellow box. In the 3D view, it will be shown as a white box with solid lines. This will show you the shape of your geometry. As with the selection tool, you can change the height and the width of the box the size values being in the wireframe views. In the top right view you can see that the box is 256.0 by 152.0 and in the bottom right the side view it's 256.0 by 64.0. Bottom left you will see in the front view it shows the same only that if you change the width the change is shown in the top right view. When you press enter this will create a block with the default or standard texture. Far right you will see a browser with the texture on show. When you click on this texture you will be able to click through all of the textures. Now you can change the texture. But after you select the new texture it still won't be applied to the block. We'll cover that a little bit later. But you can create another block now and this will have the new texture. Again there are other shapes to be found in the hammer editor, for example you could use a curve, a cylinder or a triangle. To the far right of your screen, under objects, there are more shapes. Click on sphere using the block tool, 
you can place it by dragging once again the mouse to make the familiar yellow lined box. Press enter and you will get a ball shape appear in the 3D view, but this is just an example. Now the texture application tool. With this you can change the texture on all six sides one at a time. If you want to, click on one side, go to browse and select a different texture. Then left click on one of the sides, this will turn reddish. Click the right button on your mouse and the old texture is replaced, but only on one side. Now to the apply current texture tool. When you select a block and then go to the apply current texture, you'll see that the whole block has now turned to the same texture. With this tool, it's not possible to change the sides individually. There is also a useful tool called Replace. You can find it by the Texture Application tool or by the far right when you use the Selection tool. To use the Replace tool, click on it and you will get a small window pop-up. The left hand box has the original texture in it. The right hand box will be blacked out. Use the left box to view the textures you have already used in your project. If you click on one of them and then click OK, the older texture will be replaced throughout the whole map. This concludes the first part of the second tutorial. For more information please visit our website at www.lambdarising.com. Thank you for watching.